Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to run through coastal erosion with you and as always there's a link in the description box below for a worksheet that you can complete while watching this video to support your home learning or your revision. So when we think about the term erosion in geography, we're thinking about the wearing away of material and specifically today in this video we're looking at erosion on the coastline. So we're thinking about the wearing away of the coastline and when erosion does take place on the coastline there are four main ways that the coastline can be eroded by the force of the waves. The first is known as hydraulic action. This involves the waves crashing against the rocks and the cliff faces on our coastline and that water compresses the air in the cracks in the rocks and therefore expands those cracks. We then have abrasion or some textbooks call this corrasion but abrasion is the geographical term that is outlined in many GCSE exam specifications and this type of erosion process involves eroded particles that are actually within the water and when the water and the waves throw these particles against the coastline they will scrape and rub down against the rock removing small pieces along the way. So abrasion typically takes place when we have destructive waves occurring on our coastline because these waves have enough energy to throw particles and sediment at the cliff faces which then scrape and scratch down like sandpaper on those cliff faces and this is known as abrasion. Our third type of coastal erosion is known as attrition and attrition is when we have eroded particles in the water smashing into each other and breaking into smaller fragments. This is why you will often see pebbles or shingle located along your shoreline where their edges have been rounded off because attrition is this constant smashing together of these particles and they create these lovely rounded edges as they bash together or even sometimes rub together within the water. And finally we have solution and solution involves weak carbonic acid that is present within our seawater and that will dissolve rock, specifically chalk and limestone rock and it will eventually slowly wear away the cliff faces and any material made of chalk and limestone by this weak carbonic acid in the seawater dissolving the particles. So if we then consider what influences the rate of erosion because every single coastline in the world will potentially have erosion taking place along it. However, some coastlines are eroded much faster than others which unfortunately means that some coastlines are at risk of retreating and moving back whereas other coastlines experience very little erosion. So the first thing to influence the rate of erosion is something known as fetch and we have covered fetch in a previous video when we looked at the importance of waves. When we're talking about fetch we're talking about the distance over which the wind has blown. So the greater the fetch means that the energy that has been created from the wind creating friction over the surface of the waves has increased because of the length of time over which the wind has blown as well as the distance the wind has traveled from. We've then got strong winds so again the strength of the winds will determine the rate of erosion whether erosion is taking place fast or slow on our coastline. So strong winds blow for a very long period of time and they are known for creating destructive waves. Again, in a previous video, the importance of waves, I'll put the link in the description box below, we looked at this idea that destructive waves have a very weak swash but a really strong backwash and therefore erosion takes place along the coastlines when destructive waves are present.
We've then got coastal landscapes influencing the rate of erosion. For example, if we come to a stretch of coastline where we have a sheer sudden drop cliff face coming into contact with the sea with no beach between the sea and the cliff face, we potentially are going to see an increase in erosion taking place at the base of the cliff. And this is because there is no beach between the waves and the cliff to protect the base of the cliff from erosion taking place. And finally, we also have geology influencing erosion rates. We have resistant and less resistant rock present on our coastlines. Resistant rock is hard rock, tough rock, very strong, and is therefore more resistant to erosion. Whereas your less resistant rock, your soft rock, is more likely to be eroded. Boulder clay is a perfect example of this type of rock, which if it comes into contact with water, it erodes very, very quickly. So, as always everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping you're finding these videos useful. Like and subscribe if you are, and I'll see you next time.